Surgical Treatment for Perth's Disease As I mentioned previously in a video titled Perth's Disease, Non-Surgical Treatment, Children who are younger than 6 years have a better prognosis and benefit from non-surgical treatments and they may not need surgery. Between 6 and 8 years old, they may or may not need surgery. Surgery is most often recommended when the child is older than age 8 at the time of diagnosis, because the potential for deformity during the reossification stage is greater in older children. When more than 50% of the femoral head is damaged, keeping the femoral head within the rounded acetabulum may help the bone grow into a functional shape. And if non-surgical treatment has not kept the hip in correct position for healing, I will explain the different options of surgical treatments respectively. Core decompression and injection of bone stem cells into the femoral head. Core decompression surgery is only recommended in the early stages of Perth's disease, before the femoral head has collapsed or flattened and no longer fits neatly into the hip socket. During core decompression, a wire with a 1 to 2 mm diameter is used to make small holes in the femoral head, to stimulate the healing process of the core of bone that is inside the femoral head and to expedite the healing process. These holes relieve pressure and allows for the growth of new blood vessels. The wire is inserted through a small incision and is then guided through the femoral neck into the center for the femoral head. The main concern of this type of procedure is the potential harm that could be caused by the wires crossing the growth plate in the upper thigh bone. There is no evidence of harm to the growth plate, and the rate of successful around a 70% for this procedure. The bone stem cells are harvested through a simple needle aspiration from the part of the hip bone that is at the waistline, iliac crest. A special needle is then inserted into the core of the femoral head and the bone stem cells are injected. After the procedure, a Scottish right brace is worn during the day and at night. Eventually, when the range of motion of the hip is maintained and stabilized, the brace is worn only at night. After the core decompression and stem cell injection, the child returns to the clinic for follow-up visits every four to six weeks during the six months after surgery. Children who have this surgery may use crutches during this time to avoid putting pressure on the joint. It should be emphasized that the basic stretching exercises are still very important and still need to be performed two to three times per day. Hip Distraction the doctor may recommend hip distraction for children with more severe symptoms that cannot be treated using other methods. During this procedure, the surgeon attaches a device, called an external fixator, to the hip and upper leg. The external fixator holds the femoral head in the cup and maintains perfect containment. The fixator also gradually reduces compression in the hip joint, allowing it to heal without harming tendons and ligaments. Tenotomy is performed to allow the hip joint to become more mobile so that the femoral head can be placed into the proper position inside the cup before the external fixator is applied. In children with severe symptoms, hip distraction may be combined with core decompression and injection of bone stem cells into the femoral head. The device may be kept in place for three to six months. Because it provides stability, children are still able to walk while wearing an external fixator. The child will learn to walk with either a walker or crutches with 50% weight bearing allowed on the affected hip during the four months that the external fixator is worn. The doctor may recommend the physical therapy, which can help your child to regain range of motion in the hip during recovery. After the external fixator is removed, a Scottish right brace or a special abduction pillow with Velcro straps is worn by the patient. The child will be able to walk and to sit while wearing the brace or pillow. This brace or pillow is worn full-time 24 hours a day for 4 weeks. 
The child will start wearing the brace or pillow only at night and will continue to do this for the next three to six months. After the external fixator is removed, the physical therapy and home exercise program is essential. The child will need to return to the clinic for a follow-up appointment six weeks after the external fixator is removed. After that appointment, additional follow-up appointments will occur every two to three months for the first year so that we can monitor the hip. When more than a year has passed, the number of office appointments per year decreases to only one appointment every six to 12 months until the child is approximately 18 years old. The goal is that six to eight months after the external fixator is applied, the child will be able to participate in all physical activities. The PERTS exercises need to be performed daily, but they need to be done only once a day. The PERTS exercises continue until the child graduates from high school. Femoral and or pelvic osteotomy Osteotomy is a procedure in which the surgeon resets misshapen bone and secures it within the hip socket by deepening the socket or changing the position of the femoral head. The surgeon can perform a procedure known as a femoral osteotomy, which reorients the way the femoral head fits inside the hip socket. The bone is then secured with a metal plate and screws. The goal of surgery is containment. The idea is to keep the femoral head within the acetabulum. The socket part of the joint can serve as a mold to help the fragmented femoral head retain its round shape. Sometimes, the socket must also be made deeper because the head of the femur has actually enlarged during the healing process and no longer fits snugly within it. In order to protect the repair and maximize healing, there is a possibility that your child may need to be placed into a cast for six to eight weeks after surgery. After the cast is removed, physical therapy will be needed to restore muscle strength and range of motion. Crutches or a walker will be necessary to reduce weight bearing on the affected hip. Your doctor will continue to monitor the hip with x-rays through the final stages of healing. Successful treatment means that the child is free of pain and can return to all previous activities even if the shape of the femoral head is not ideal. The two most important factors that determine your child's outcome are their age at the onset of treatment and how much of their femoral head is affected. Children who are younger than 6 to 8 years have a better prognosis. Perhaps because more time is permitted for femoral remodeling and because before 8 years of age the acetabulum is plastic and can mold to the deformed femoral head, maintaining congruity. More than half of the children with Perth's disease return to normal activities within a few years from the beginning of the disease. The development of Perth's disease when the child is older than 8, the development of poor range of motion, and the presence of a non-round femoral head even after treatment usually carries a worse prognosis. It is estimated that approximately 50% of those patients will need a hip replacement by later adulthood, between 50 to 60 years old.